Good afternoon learners. Welcome to NIOS. And today we will be covering chapter 18 in your syllabus that is Night of the Scorpion. So this poem was written by Nisim Ezekiel, a pioneering Indian English poet who in his poems included both romantic and modern elements. He resolved to design his poetic world with the images of urbanity and contemporary India which takes a leading space in his poetry. He is also known as the father of modern English poetry. Nisim Ezekiel is the master of many art forms. He is a prolific dramatist, critic, broadcaster and social commentator. Ezekiel also taught at different universities in India. He has been a professor in UK and USA. Okay, so he was a professor of literature. Ezekiel tries to focus on Indian values and ideals and he is intentionally and painfully conscious of the defects of modern Indian people. He has honestly portrayed the picture of India with its culture, people, social norms, belief, religion, myth and so forth. He has no intentions to glorify India with false images. So learners, what did you learn? Yes, that Nizim Isikil always portrayed the reality from, like he always portrayed the reality in his poems, in his works. He did not hide anything. He did not show any false impressions. Okay, he, he portrayed the picture of true India in his works. So learners, this is a picture of Nisim Ezekiel. Please look at the picture. Like eminent writers of the world, Ezekiel moves beyond all borders and a modern poet in him seeks a reformation through Indian values, peace and non-violence. So Nisim Ezekiel Lanas, like you know, he was a very prolific and a very famous poet. He is also known as the father of modern English poetry. Now Lanas, let's go through the poem together. Let's read the poem together Lanas. I remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of steady rain had driven him. To crawl beneath a sack of rice, parting with his poison, flash of diabolic tail in the dark room. He risked the rain again. The peasants came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. With candles and with lanterns, throwing giant scorpion shadows. On the mud-baked walls, they searched for him. He was not found. They clicked their tongues. With every movement that the scorpion made, his poison moved in mother's blood, they said. May your suffering decrease the misfortunes of your next birth, they said. May the sum of evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good become diminished by your pain. May the poison purify your flesh of desire and your spirit of ambition, they said. And they sat around on the floor with my mother in the center. The piece of understanding on each face more candles, more lanterns, more neighbors, more insects and the endless rain. My mother twisted through and through, groaning on a mat. My father, skeptic, rationalist, trying every curse and blessing, powder, mixture, herb and hybrid. He even poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it. 
I watched the flame feeding on my mother. I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with incantation. After 20 hours, it lost its tongue. My mother only said, thank God, the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. So learners, isn't this poem beautiful? So let me show you this diagram, learners. So, so this basically shows the major themes covered in the poem. So if you look at the diagram, so, so basically in the center, the name of the poem, and it shows how the scorpions attack. Second theme, it shows the role of villagers. Then, the role of the skeptic and the rationalist father. And finally, this poem shows mother and her agony, her pain. Okay, so these are basically the four major themes that have been covered in the poem. The night of the scorpion learners can be interpreted into two different ways. First, the poet describes how on a rainy day, the narrator's mother is bitten by a scorpion. And what are the chain reactions to it? Second, the poem depicts the Indian ethos. Ethos means learners culture. Okay, the poem depicts the Indian culture superstitions and cultural richness through a simple incident symbolizing the typical motherhood which is depicted for her sacrifice and affection for her children. So this poem can be considered very typical okay, and it is very culturally oriented. Indian mothers are known for their sacrificial attitude. Okay, and in this poem, it is depicted beautifully. The poet narrates the poem by remembering his childhood when his mother was bitten by a scorpion. He says that the continuous rainfall for 10 hours had driven the scorpion into the house where it crawled beneath a sack of rice. When his mother entered the dark room, the scorpion parted the poison into her toe and disappeared. After stinging the poet's toe with his deadly tail, the scorpion immediately left the area and headed to the pouring rain. This is what a scorpion looks like, learners. It, it's very poisonous in nature. Okay, if you ever get bit by a scorpion, it's very difficult to recover because the scorpion is full of poison. The news spread, you know, the biting, you know, when the scorpion bit the mother. The news spread throughout the village and the peasants gathered in the poet's house in large numbers like swarms of flies and buzzed God's name about a hundred times praying to God to stop the movements of the scorpion. They believe that the scorpion, like with every move of the scorpion, the pain would aggravate in the mother and the poison would spread throughout her blood. So the villagers came to the poet's house. They wanted to kill the scorpion because they believed that with every movement, Okay, with every move of the scorpion, the poison would increase in the mother's blood. So the villagers searched the poet's house with candles and lanterns to paralyze the evil scorpion. But the scorpion was very clever. He disappeared in the dark. As a number of villagers gathered in the house, the shadows they formed on the walls too appeared as a scorpion to the poet. So this is an example of imagery learners. Okay. The villagers clicked their tongues and prayed to God to immobilize the scorpion. It was believed that every movement made by the scorpion 
would increase the spread of the poison in the mother's body, thus making the pain more severe. The villagers prayed that the scorpion stops and the sins of mother's previous birth gets washed away that night or her sufferings might decrease the misfortunes of her next birth. Learners, villagers had this another superstition also. They believed that mother's pain, you know, would, would wash away the sins of her previous birth and would decrease the misfortunes of her next birth. Okay, so this is what they believed in. They said this way the sums of evil might get balanced in this unreal world. They called the world unreal as everything in this world is temporary and birth and deaths keep occurring in cycle. The superstitious parents believed that the current suffering would burn away earlier evil actions or that the current suffering learners would free one to endure no suffering in the next birth. In the poem learners, the pain is the equalizer of hope, okay, in the temporal world. So the ignorant parents wished that the poison must purify the poet's mother's body and soul. The ignorant, the superstitious pe peasants learners, they are praying that the scorpion should be killed. They are empathizing with the mother. They are watching her groan and moan in pain. Okay, and, and with, with the pain, they are talking among themselves that, you know, if the pain prolongs, then this would actually decree, would wash away the sins of a previous birth and decrease the sorrows and the misfortunes of the next birth. You know, they are hopeful that the pain would do that. The main idea of Night of the Scorpion is that it is a representation of rural Indian ethos learners. Like I have said before, ethos means culture. It believes on evil, suffering and its people. The villagers even prayed to God that the poison will purify her flesh. They sat around the mother who was groaning in pain. There was calmness as they thought that she had approached her end. The condition was becoming very critical learners as many neighbors were entering the house with more candles and lanterns. The insects were also increasing and the rain also continued. With the mother learners, even the villagers, they were helpless. They were trying to find the scorpion, but they were helpless. It, their efforts went in vain. All they could do was just to pray to God to lessen the mother's suffering. Whereas on the other hand, Lanas, the poet's father was a skeptic. Skeptic means a person who doubts everything. He was a skeptic and a rationalist who experimented with powders, combinations, and plants to treat his mother. However, because it was a difficult circumstance, he also attempted prayers and blessings. He burned the bitten toe by pouring paraffin on it. The priest, there was a priest also in the house learners. The priest who had also arrived at the location was performing holy ceremonies to Tame the poison learners. Tame means to reduce the poison. So after the father's efforts and even the priest's efforts, after 20 hours, after 20 long hours, the sting was gone. After being cured, the mother praised God for choosing her and sparing her children. So learners, isn't it beautiful? This shows the sacrificial love, the un, unending love of a mother towards her children. Night of the Scorpion is a poem. Like I've said before, learners, it is a poem 
based on Indian scenario of superstitions and traditions. And poet's Indian feelings. It represents an incident in the past when the poet's mother was stung by a scorpion. It was a rainy night. The continuous 10 hour rains have driven the scorpion to call beneath a sack of rice to keep itself dry. The poet's father believed in reason and logic. He applied his common sense to relieve his wife's pain. He poured some paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a flash of matchstick to it. So basically he lit the paraffin which he attached to the mother's toe. Even a holy man was called to chant mantras. But everything went in vain. Nothing happened or you know the poet doesn't believe that if, if these mantras helped. But after long 20 hours, the old lady, the mother, got relief from the pain and she thanked God. She was so thankful and grateful to God that the scorpion did not sting his children. Beautiful. Now, learners, let's go through some themes in the poem. So, basically, the first theme that has been covered in the poem is the theme of a rainy day. Well, in the first stanza, you'll know that it describes an occurrence that occurred on a rainy night. The poet recalls that it had been pouring, it had been raining heavily for 10 hours and that a scorpion had crawled beneath a bag of rice in the poet's home to avoid getting wet. Then, unfortunately, the scorpion stung the poet's mother. And after biting his mother, the scorpion with his diabolic tail. Diabolic learners means evil, something which has poison. Okay, so after biting the mother, the scorpion with its poisonous tail left the house. One thing is certain, the scorpion arrived to defend itself from the continuous rain. And it may have bitten just to protect itself. Animals do that. Insects do that. They attack, they bite to protect themselves. The poet's description of the scorpion as diabolic shows the poet's rage towards it. Which is understandable from the perspective of a son. So, if you, if you look at the poem, the poet calls the scorpion diabolic. It Diabolic, which I told you, means something evilish. It means something poisonous. So why is the scorpion referring to the... Why is the poet... Sorry, learners. Why is the poet referring the scorpion as diabolic? Because he has deep grudges against him. He's angry towards him. Why did the scorpion bite the mother? Why did the scorpion bite his mother? He's very angry. That is why... He's choosing such negative terms for the scorpion. The next theme is the concern of the neighboring peasants. Okay, learners, this is the next theme of the poem. Upon knowing the poet's mother was stung by a scorpion, the neighboring peasants quickly came to the poet's house like swarms of flies. They took God's name a hundred times in order to paralyze the evil. And who is this evil? Yes, scorpion. They started to find out the scorpion, but their search went in vain. The peasants clicked their tongues. The link between individual families and neighboring peasants is prominent here. In contrast to city settings, People in rural areas live in peace and harmony. They help each other. In Delhi or in, you know, in urban areas, do neighbors help you? No, they don't even care who you are. But yes, if you go to small towns, if you go to villages, if something happens in one house, all the community, they come together to help that family. The poet's family has a close contact with the nearby peasants. Those who stepped up to rescue were quite helpful. Here the poet uses the simile like swarms of flies. 
okay so he like swarms of flies he is using it to compare the movement of flies and the people to the poet's house the people in general are conventional okay they are conventional conventional means they they have old thinking okay they believe in old traditions so you know in in the poem the villagers are conventional and they follow their customs and this is reflected in the poem when the poet's mother was stung by a scorpion they began chanting they began clicking their tongues learners what do you mean by clicking their tongues they started chanting the moment they came to the poet's house and the moment they got to know about the severity of the incident they started chanting the third theme is views on the victim the villager said that with every movement made by the scorpion would aggravate would accelerate the spread of the poison in the victim's body making the suffering more severe they wanted the scorpion would remain motionless so that the agony would be less terrible they also said that the pain would cleanse her of the sins of a previous birth moreover learners they said that the suffering will decrease the misfortunes of a next birth they thought that the sum of all evil and good might be balanced by the pain suffered by the mother furthermore they thought that the poison might purify the flesh of her desire and ambition the villagers sat around the mother on the floor and they looked content for they thought they grasped the situation it is ironic that they thought they had understood her pain whereas they could not understand the groaning of the poet's mother they thought that by their old traditions by all superstitions if they follow that the pain would reduce they thought that they understood the mother's pain but they failed to do that more neighbors visited the house with candles and lanterns and the rain kept showering poet's mother on the other hand was just rolling on the mat and her pain was getting intense the neighbors wanted to kill the scorpion to stop the pain of the mother but at the same time they believed that the pain is the outcome of the past evil or the pain is the way to lessen the misfortunes in the next birth isn't it a contradictory belief learners where the pain is the symbol of sins it is also the symbol of cleansing at the same time okay so it, it seems like a very contradictory statement the villagers may be superstitious but their concern for the poet's mother who was suffering is really appreciable okay so their chance you know their unity in the poem it's quite appreciative the mother on the one hand is groaning in pain at least they're sympathizing they're empathizing with the mother this thought is very appreciable on the villagers part what is now the fourth theme is the reaction of the poet's father like we have discussed before the poet's father he was a skeptic and a rationalist he implemented his knowledge of science in that incident he tried to relieve his wife's pain through his knowledge of science he tried every blessing power mixture herbs hybrid medicines he tried everything to relieve his wife of the pain at last he was helpless he poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a flash of matchstick to it the flame feeding on my mother means that the flame is eating up his mother's toe so the father the poet's father was helpless he had no knowledge being a skeptic he did not believe in the old traditions the intensity of old traditions so he poured a little paraffin and he lit it okay so he was helpless the poet dramatizes a contrast between the worlds of irrationality and logic as represented by the villagers and the father 
Though the father was a rational person, his decision to apply paraffin on the mother's toe was not. We can't, however, learners ignore his motivation in attempting to save his wife from suffering in that terrible position. Thank you learners for joining. We'll meet next time.